greetings and salutations. This is your friendly neighborhood Mr. Tafi here, who's gonna recap all the lovely news and tidbits for this week of May in 5 minutes or less. Whether it's about cuddly make-believe rats voiced by Deadpool, or the latest cock-up from Malaysia's esports body, we've got you sorted. Without further ado, here we go! Pokemon Detective Pikachu is now out in theatres all over Malaysia and Southeast Asia, and so far it's been getting positive reviews. Critics praise the world, Pokemon, and Ryan Reynolds' VO chops as Detective Pikachu. Our own reviewer Comics Lord said the film could have featured more battles and Pokemon elements instead of doing something with a side story. But hey, at least it does its source material a huge amount of justice, which is more than I can say for the majority of video game movie adaptations out there. On a related note, if you want to find out who the best 50 Pokemon are, look no further than our awesome Top 50 Best Pokemon of All Time list, featuring Pokemon from alternate dimensions and a lot of cute and fluffiness. He's so fluffy, I'm gonna die! We know that there's going to be a big Dota 2 tournament happening later this year, but did you know that the prize pool is growing to astronomical rates as we speak? Thanks to the recent Battle Pass announcement, where 25% of the funds go to the TI9 pool, the tournament is now worth, get ready for your pinkies, US 9 freaking million. What's in the past anyway? Eh, some new custom game modes, prestige items, and other stuff worth US 9 bucks and above if you're into this sort of thing. Esports experts like Slasher predict that TI9's price pool will break the US 25 million record set by last year's TI8. After so many months of facing regulation challenges, Tencent finally caved and pulled PUBG out of China, and replaces it with a game called Game for Peace, which plays a wee bit similar to the Battle Royale game I just mentioned. There's a lot of glorifying bits for the Chinese Air Force, there's no gore, well, less than the usual PG stuff, I mean it feels like glorified paintball, and dead players don't plop down and die. They just wave goodbye to you and disappear. Apart from some socialist level aesthetic changes, Game for Peace is PUBG but made for China and features <clears throat> regulatory approval to generate revenue. Hey, whatever that floats Tencent's money-eating boat for total world domination, right? Better start picking up Chinese in the near future if you haven't already. Before we begin, we should congratulate the selected Malaysian players who will be representing our country for the upcoming SEA Games 2019 esports tournament later this year. Great job organizing it, ESM. The other stuff that happened after? Not so much. The first half of this two-part controversy goes like this. The brother of Malaysia's youth minister, Said Abdullah, was listed as a guest of honour but was then removed on the same day of the post. This made many viewers accusing Said Abdullah of representing the minister, Said Sadiq, at the event. Said Sadiq responded with the following via Twitter. It's so wrong because it's untrue. ESM has already come out with a statement correcting this. Which they did. He added that his brother turned up at the event uninvited and did not require any special treatment. What sparked the ire of many is that he's conveniently all dressed up and was able to secure a VIP pass. Razor CEO Min Liang Tan got Said Sadiq's back, because they're bros and stuff online. Now here's the second half of the story. On 7th May, Matrisuka Nagara, or the National Sports Council of Malaysia, pushed out a statement after ESM criticised them for not providing financial support for the 2019 SEA Games Malaysia Esports Selection event. That statement from NSC Director General Ahmad Shapawi claimed that both parties held several meetings together and agreed to pass ESM RM750K for this event in exchange for an official request and budget breakdown. Unfortunately, ESM goofed. They proceeded to organize the tourney without responding accordingly, with the official request for the funds being processed two days after the event. To add more salt to ESM's self-inflicted wound, sources close to KKP said that there was no cash prize pool, no transportation, and no lodging for the Malaysian athletes due to this lack of funding during the tournament. This isn't really painting a good light on ESM at the moment, despite the good I mentioned earlier. This morning's State of Play video, brought to you by PlayStation, showed off new footage of the Final Fantasy VII Remake. It ticks the usual checkboxes. Lovely graphics, old characters made anew, combat and gameplay that looks like a mix between Crisis Core FF7 and FF15, and no confirmed release date slash window. 
Fret not, there's going to be more info about the game in Square Enix's E3 showcase on 11 June 9am GMT plus 8. So have patience, JRPG fans. That's all for this week's KKP Rhapsody. Until then, that's the way the world pixelates.